You will now hear a major campaign address by the only combat veteran and labor man running for Congress, Mr. M. H. Mike Ross of Greensboro, Progressive Party candidate for Congress in the 6th District. Mr. M. H. Ross. Four years ago, millions of us in foxholes or on farms or in city precincts voted to return our friend and leader, Franklin Roosevelt, to the presidency. In April 1945, they buried our president in Hyde Park, and then the two old parties buried the New Deal in Washington. Herbert Hoover, who had been kept out of Washington for 12 years, was invited by Truman to the White House. The banking house boys, the all-well diplomats, and the big brass generals took over. And they did a pretty good job of tearing down most of what Roosevelt had patiently built up over 12 years. The bipartisan war drive is being exposed every day for what it really is, a plan by Wall Street interests to control the world. Both old parties reject the United Nations as an instrument for world peace while they militarize America and support a Cold War which will lead to World War III. Their Marshall Plan is a plan to rebuild German monopolies while Nazis are restored to power. Billions in our taxpayers' money is being poured down the drain into the hands of a fascist Greek king, a feudal government in Turkey, and Chinese dictator Chiang Kai-shek. Today's papers show us how corrupt and rotten Chiang is, when after three years of pouring five billion dollars in guns and money into China, his armies are routed by the common people of China who want nothing of him. Can you remember when Roosevelt wanted to spend a little old million dollars for WPA or farm aid or helping labor? How the big corporations used to scream that he was busting the country? But it's okay for them to spend billions for their Marshall Plan. Look at Palestine. They have got the Jews and Arabs fighting each other, while British and American oil companies ring up profits on the cash register. The tragic story of the betrayal of Israel is the same in Greece, Turkey, China, and everywhere. Dollar diplomacy, big business deals, power politics in place of the Roosevelt-Wallace good neighbor policy. And while they prepare to draft 18-year-olds for Wall Street's war, and while they raise prices at home to increase their fantastic profits, they keep tearing away at labor's gains here in the United States. The Taft-Hartley law is the domestic arm of the Marshall Plan and Truman Doctrine abroad. The coming depression will make the crash of 1929 seem like child's play. Many workers are already being laid off or going on short time. What are working people going to do, stretched out and speeded up now when the wage cuts come? How will they feed their families on three days work a week? Will a strike-breaking Truman or a Wall Street-controlled Dewey or a mill owner Dixocrat like Thurman be the kind of man we want in the White House when hard times hit? Or do we want the friend of Roosevelt, his vice president and co-worker, the farmer labor man Henry Wallace around when we need him? Never mind the lies and slander in the papers. Listen to what Franklin Roosevelt himself said of Wallace only 11 weeks before he died. Quote, you and I can be grateful also for what Henry Wallace is in the meaning of the things we have been trying to do to make a better world. America, its people, and its government need Henry Wallace now more than ever before. I count on his aid, his wisdom, and his courage." End quote. That was what FDR said only 11 weeks before he died. Roosevelt and Wallace brought the farmers out of depression, helped labor from breadlines toward dignity, the two old parties have betrayed everything Roosevelt stood for. Now is the time to turn back to Roosevelt's program by electing Henry Wallace and the Progressive Party. After 50 years of Democratic Party rule in North Carolina, the courthouse rings and machine politicians are happy, but the poor folks are underpaid, underfed, stretched out and pushed around. It's past time for a change. But what's the use of switching to the Republicans if you're looking for something to help the common people? If you vote for the big men's parties and expect any help for yourself, you might just as well sow seeds on concrete and wait for a crop. Listen, folks, they can call me a socialist or a communist. I care not. But I hold to the theory that if one man has not enough to eat three times a day and another man has $25 million, that last man has something that belongs to the first. I denounce the criminal system, which makes a God-imaged man of less value to society than a St. Bernard dog. 
It is time that someone told the big corporations off with their stretch out and speed up, which they call efficiency, with their anti-union policies, which they call good labor relations. They cry that they can't raise labor's wages or reduce the workload. I feel like saying about them what the little boy said about the bulldog. 1% dog and 99% bull. Carl Durham is the congressman from this district, a so-called Democrat, but a labor hater from head to foot. He should not be introduced in Washington as the representative from North Carolina, but rather as the congressman from the Tobacco Trust and the big mill owners. These corporations don't need lobbyists up there when they have their own lawyers and druggists holding seats in Congress. I think it's about time we shed a little light on Carl Durham so the people can have a full view before they vote. You know the story of the country boy that came to a farmer one night to borrow a lantern? At first he refused to say why he wanted it, but finally confessed that he wanted to go courting. The old farmer was scornful. I did my courting without a lantern, he said. Yes, said the boy, and look at your missus. Well, let's hold the lantern up to over Carl Durham's head before anybody votes for him tomorrow. Look at his voting record. A Democrat he is, but he fought President Roosevelt at every turn in the road. He was against labor all the way. He voted for the manufacturer's union-busting Taft-Hartley law. He voted to kill price and rent controls, bringing about these fantastic food and clothing prices we have today. He voted against the veterans' housing bill. He sure don't give two hoots about the GIs who fought the last war. He voted against farm aid, which would have helped the small farmers. But they tell me he calls himself a gentleman farmer down at Chapel Hill. You know, the kind that farm the farmers, the ones who don't know the difference between a maypop and a rabbit hunt. The working man or woman, the small farmer or little businessman who can contemplate this outrage, this political joke for a congressman, and not get mad enough to do something about him, such a man hasn't got enough red blood in him to fatten a mosquito. I am the only man fighting for the common people, running for Congress in this district. My opponents, Democratic and Republican, will not fight for labor, the small farmers, the war veterans, and the common people. I am the only one that doesn't hide his platform, who brings it out strong and bold. I am for outright repeal of the mill owners, Taft-Hartley law against labor. I am for a one dollar an hour minimum wage, that's for common labor, so that semi-skilled and skilled workers can go forward and make a dollar seventy-five and two dollars an hour. Today's terribly high prices require a one dollar minimum federal law. Some of these big companies, I notice, are trying to give labor a hard time on their contracts. Many AFL locals in the building trades and some big cotton mills in the CIO. These corporations are doing that so that they can cut wages when hard times hit and the people won't have protection. I dare either one of my opponents to state publicly his support of these good, honest working people in North Carolina who face fights for their union contracts. It takes courage these days to come out with an all-out labor program and stand up against the abuse and slander the big men throw at you. There are two big lies the rich men and their newspapers tell. One is the red lie, and the other is the race lie. They call Wallace and the new party communist and red. These same rich men called old age pensions, wage hour laws, farm aid and labor unions red. They call anything that helps the poor folks red. Listen, they can call me red, black or blue, but I'm going to continue to fight for the little folks and they'll never call me yellow. The papers act as if all that the progressive party is interested in is the Negro. Folks, the new party does fight for all the people, not just a part of the people, but all of them. The reason I favor anti-lynching and fair employment laws is pretty plain. It's like Dr. Frank Graham said a few years ago. In order to play the Star Spangled Banner on a piano, it takes both the white and the black keys of that piano. And in order to get decent wages, higher farm income and a better South, it takes both white and Negro people. The rich mill owners and the Dixiecrats try to preach race hatred in order to divide us. They believe in divide and conquer get the poor white and Negro people to fighting each other, and the rich man just sits back and laughs at both. I don't believe in keeping the Negro down in the ditch because we white workers will have to stay down there with him. When we all get decent treatment, fair wages and justice, all of us prosper. That's not hard to understand. 
It's in the United States Constitution and the Bible. If you believe in real American principles and Christian brotherhood, you will agree with me that we need more working together and less prejudice. As I go through this district, in Durham, Burlington, Greensboro, and High Point, and in the smaller places like Haw River, Mebon, Pomona, Brown Summit, Jamestown, as I listen to the tales of woe told me by workers in their mill village homes about stretch out, wage cuts, hungry kids, leaking houses, discrimination, it's enough to bring tears to the eyes of strong men. It ought to be enough to melt the icy hearts of these soulless corporations. But the saddest tales are those of these old folks who gave their lives and labor to industry and now face a destitute sundown without income or aid. I say it's criminal to hand these old people 18 and $25 a month. Why don't they just tell them to starve to death? I here and now pledge to fight in Congress for $100 per month old age pensions at 60 years of age for every old person with an income of under that a month. Does that sound crazy? I'll tell you what sounds crazier to millions of combat veterans like myself. To talk about another war and be spending billions of dollars with the big corporations making huge profits while preparing for one. I am getting sick and tired of men like Churchill who have the morals of a mud turtle and the standards of decency of a British Tory telling us our American foreign policy. It's easy for an old imperialist like Churchill to say, you Americans and you Russians fight. He sure won't. Everyone knows that the next war will be fought on American soil. Our generals admit it. It's our cities that will be leveled. Our wives and kids bombed and atom bombed while we poor folks do the fighting. We don't want such a war. We want a return to Roosevelt's good neighbor policy and peace in the world. We can spend that war money here at home on better housing, free medical health clinics, old age pensions, a veteran's bonus, higher wages, and farm aid. We need a federal law against stretch out, making it a crime and misdemeanor to put a workload on people which will impair their health or safety. That is my program and the program of the only party which is run by workers and farmers, the new Progressive Party of North Carolina. Help me to get you these things. You can vote Progressive Party tomorrow at the polls by putting your X in the third column on the ballot. Let's send Carl Durham back to Chapel Hill to fill prescriptions and send a man to Congress who will fight for the workers, small farmers, veterans, and common people. That's my program. And there is about as much difference between me and Carl Durham as there is between lightning and a lightning bug. Vote M.H. Ross in the third column tomorrow if you want me up in Congress. If you want a combat veteran and a labor man, vote Ross for Congress no matter how else you vote. And remember, you never vote waste your vote when you vote for people and principles you believe in. Vote Ross for Congress in the third column tomorrow. You have just heard a major campaign address by Mr. M.H. Mike Ross of Greensboro, Progressive Party candidate for Congress in this district. Mr. Ross' name will appear in the third column on your ballot tomorrow. <laughs>